Okay, so boom, here we are, right? We have framer.ai. Here's just here's the game, right? You're gonna log in, you can click launch. Um, obviously, you would have to log in, you would have to make your uh, account pretty simple. And then what's gonna happen is uh, <laughs> this is where we start the theft, this is where we start the Sly Cooper stealing. And what's gonna happen is that you're gonna take HTML to Framer. You're going to need this, right? So I already have it in my extensions. You're gonna take this, right? Let's say that you wanna start a blog. Let's say that you wanna start an affiliate marketing page. Let's say you wanna start a dropshipping store, whatever the case, right? But you don't know where to begin, so you're just wondering, and so maybe you wanna kind of get some ideas from other people's blogs and how they lay them out as well, right? So let's go to Google's blog, right? The keyword, which is a fire name for a blog, by the way. And so let's say uh, we started saying, okay, what if we wanted our blog to look a little bit more like this, right? So here's the beautiful thing. You remember when I told you about that extension that you're going to need remember the html to framer one so you go and you get you click that you get that right and so right here you'll see that it says if you want to copy an element just click if you want to copy multiple press shift and if you want to select parent press escape right so let's say that we just want to copy this image first so we'll just click on this image and then you're going to bring it over to framer and you're going to click new once you click new, you're going to come over here. You're going to click on the canvas. You'll know that it's clicked when this is highlighted. You want to click on the canvas and you're just going to command V or you can double click right here and then paste. And so then boom, now you have the image. Now what's beautiful about Framer is that Framer automatically uh, resizes the canvas to where you just came from. So now we have the image, right? Now let's say we wanted this as well. Right, just to get a nice understanding of everything. So what happens is that you would come here, you would again click paste, and so then boom, now you're seeing our website is looking just like what Google has. And you're going to do the same thing for pretty much the rest, one image at a time. Now I'm sure you're wondering, you're probably wondering something, and I was having the same wonder as well. Why don't you just copy the entire element, right? Like why don't you just click on the whole layout, right? And then just click copy layout, and then paste it. Well, I'm gonna explain in a little bit, but once, but let's finish this little part real quick. So now we have Google's whole layout. I mean, isn't that clean? Look at that. You went and prototyped your whole website, the blog that you were looking for, and you made it like this. This is where things get really nice because now you can actually go and start editing each section. So let's say the edit for this section is remember to like and subscribe to Chuck of Helly Finance. Listen guys, I really appreciate it. Every single time that you do it, it really does mean a lot. Obviously, this is not gonna be the article, but you know, remember to like and subscribe, really do appreciate it. But let's say that now you can start just editing things and then you could just start editing different text. Now, unfortunately, it's not as clean and cut and dry as we would like. So for example, you see how I'll try to edit this text, um, but for some reason I keep typing over it. So. I don't know exactly the reason for that, but I do have a few theories. For one, Google, along with many other sites, are more than just HTML and CSS, which is what Framer AI is basically doing in order to recreate everything. You see, it literally has the file tree of everything that you know it took from Google, but um, you know, Google is made of data scripts and proxies and scrapes. There's so many things going on with Google that just these images and text is just the tip of the iceberg for a site like Google. So that's my, uh, that's my first theory. My second theory is that maybe I don't know everything that I'm doing. And my third theory is that maybe there's some type of a bug or a glitch with Framer. I've been using this for about a week now to prototype some websites and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't depending on the site. So I don't know, maybe Framer AI needs to do a little better because to my knowledge, regardless of whatever Google has going on, this is HTML and CSS, so it should be able to edit peacefully, but that isn't always the case, so I don't always know why. And now to answer something that I'm sure many of you are thinking about, is there a way for you to just copy and paste the entire site? Well, yeah, <laughs> literally. If you just click this, where if you just click somewhere, you just have to look for the place that says, you see, it could either say copy element or copy layout or whatever, but you really want to copy the one that highlights the whole page. So we're going to copy element. We're going to come over here and we can just command V or control V if you're on windows. And then once you do that, boom, 
Now it's literally making the entire site, copy and pasting the entire site word for word, bar for bar. Now this just creates what Google has on the page. It doesn't also add the interactivity that Google's page has. So if we were to take off HTML Framer, as you can see, there's a slider here, but you can't slide on Framer's uh, copy of it. And you'll even see that some of the images are a little blurry and everything. So it's not necessarily the best for ripping a site's code and everything like that. But for many web designers, many UX designers, all these guys, you will genuinely be able to start prototyping sites for yourself, for your clients to begin the ideation of a prospective new website. And that's Framer AI, which I think is uh, absolutely amazing thing. And it has this file tree that is really huge. The better you know how to use this, the more that you'll get out of Framer.ai. But you know what? Before I prototype another website, this website is so good. What we can do is that we can actually publish instantly to like a, you know, a little uh, small URL. And you just take that and boom, this is our prototype. You wouldn't even know, right? Like, I mean, obviously it's not truly the Google, you know, keyword, but Hey, in so many ways, you're just sitting there like, wow, this isn't too bad. And then you can go through each one and add links to each part of the stuff. So let's look right here. You see Google in Asia. All you would have to do, you would type, you would click on this. You would make a drop down. And uh, uh, with us, we don't have to actually find the article. You can just make the link um, to YouTube.com. And then you can just publish it. And you want to click update. So now that we've updated it, all you have to do is go back to the Framer site. You're just going to reload the page. And now Google in Asia, when we click on it, will take us to YouTube.com. So you can, again, you can see the depth of this prototyping, of this duplication, of this copying of websites. It can get really cool. And you may not even need websites like Wix or Squarespace any further when if there's a specific template that you want that, what, that Wix or Squarespace doesn't offer, you can come here and start getting and start pretty much ripping that template from whatever site that you want and putting it here. But yeah, if you want to make a new one, all you would have to do is come down here, go to dashboard. Let's click new. And then you do the whole process over again. So I have how to start a blog in 2023. All you got to do, click on HTML framer. You're going to click, you're going to click this whole thing, copy layout, and you're going to just paste it right into here. Oh, but wait, it didn't work. And that's one of the problems with Framer AI. I don't know which sites it does and doesn't work on. We can go through a lot of sites and there's gonna be a lot where what I just showed you works. There's gonna be some where it doesn't work. I mean, compared to the keyword, the Google site, I mean, we know that Google is big and huge and all these different things. This should have been harder to copy than this one, but when you try to copy the whole thing, it gives you a problem. So, all right, fine. That's why we I showed you what I showed you in the beginning, which was just copying more elements and then bringing it to the page. So what we're going to do, and so you're going to hold the shift key and you're going to copy text, copy text, cop, oh, copy text, copy text, copy text, copy text, copy text. And you know, you're then you're going to come over here and you're just going to paste the text in. Right? Boom. How to start a blog. Ooh, I guess we must have copied something twice. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Yeah. We copied something twice, so we just have to get rid of that. And so then now we have the text from the blog. And then again, we for sites like this, we have to take this just a little bit. You know, we just have to take a little bit more of our time with it, right? Then we're going to start all over. And you're going to copy a couple images. Let's copy a few things. Then you're going to come back over here. You're going to paste. Oh, paste right here. And so then boom, now we have that. And then we're going to, again, keep copying one by one. Remember, don't continue holding your shift. You need to click it one time first so that you start a whole new copying of pasting. Otherwise, when you come back and you continue holding shift, you can end up copying more of like what you had over here. So you want to click one and you, and you can actually see at the top, you see where it says copied six items. No, you don't want that. You want to start from the top again. Just click once, copied one item, and then you begin clicking shift. So that now is two, three, four, five, uh, six, and seven, right? So then we're going to come over to our site. Then we're going to paste the last bit. 
and now you see that it didn't quite work because it kind of pasted the whole thing so again another problem with framer ai is that the ai that it is it doesn't intelligently choose exactly what it's supposed to choose because it's really just taking HTMLs and divs and all these different coding aspects. And depending on how the site is structured and depending on how well the site is structured, Framer is able to accurately take what it needs. But you know, if the site is not structured in a way that's going to benefit Framer. You do get some of these, um, you will get some of these problems. But even still though, like I said, you can continue prototyping by taking more images taking more and more of the text and everything and listing them out and it is a lot better than nothing so just want to show you just another great ai for you guys to check out now there's only one true now the biggest problem that does annoy me is that you cannot export whatever website that you make which is ultimately going to be a little bit of a deal breaker for some of you guys and what i mean by exporting is that you can't take the site that we just made and now bring it over to wordpress or squarespace or wix you are locked into the framer ecosystem but i don't see that continuing to be a situation moving forward because there are rumors of it getting a buyout and if that happens i'm so positive that in the future you'll be able to export your website but other than that Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Have a great day.